no, my, my new mouse and I are not actually together. Um, in part because I'm already married and my wife is gonna have difficulty, I think, accepting a third, regardless of how many articles about throuples I send her. This video was going to be about a new beginning with a new mouse uh, until I realized nobody really wants to watch a video about a computer mouse. But then I kind of doubled down and decided that rather than make a video about one recent purchase, I'm gonna tell you about a bunch of different interesting purchases I've made recently as a designer, artist, musician, overall creative weirdo. On the premise that some of these things probably tell you something about who I am. And while I don't really imagine you care all that much about who I am, I bet you do care about cool thingies. We all care about cool thingies. Because if we are what we eat, then probably we also are what we buy. Especially in the land of the dollar. So yeah, I'm gonna start talking about this whole mouse situation and then uh, I'll eventually move on to other things, I promise. So stay tuned. It is with deep shame that I show you my old mouse. I wash my hands countless times every day, and yet everything I touch turns to oily dirt and grime. It's like I have the Midas touch, but in reverse. This mouse has traveled with me to all corners of the world. It has caressed and urged my art into being. It's pointed me to web pages of Portuguese tile and Islamic patterns. Hilarious cat videos, hidden folders, pictures I shouldn't be looking at, and pictures I should be looking at more. It's helped me insert softening words in emails. It's played games. It's saved final, final, final files. It's been a resting place for my hand as I read unbearable things. And uh, it's also apparently been an object onto which I deposit ample remnants of cheese, chocolate, and other bacterial content. So yeah, a bit of wear and weathering is alright, but uh, I decided as I'm sprucing up this new studio, it's kind of time for an upgrade. And uh, I've seen this vertical mouse pop up here and there in like YouTube videos from creators I like, and uh, I just thought it looked kind of cool. I have pretty much spent my life handling a mouse and have never had any issues with carpal tunnel syndrome or anything, so I wasn't really in the market for some ergonomic revolution. In fact, I find that most things that are supposed to be really, really good ergonomically are mostly just really good at being bad. Good at being bad. And yet, this mouse was calling my name. Um, it, it looked almost architectural, you know? Like an expensive art museum, a la Huakbar, um, the Guggenheim in New York, or the, um, the Guggenheim in Spain. And I don't know, it just kind of seemed like I'm the kind of guy who should have a vertical mouse. I did read that it's not really good for people with small hands, which I took as a personal attack and immediately bought this. The Logitech MX Vertical is also not good for left-handed people, or really it's pretty much impossible for left-handed people to use, which is obviously excluding, but I reframe that as meaning this mouse won't take just anyone. It's, it's discerning. And she and I are together now. What? Um, no, my, my new mouse and I are not actually together. Um, in part because I'm already married and my wife is gonna have difficulty, I think, accepting a third, regardless of how many articles about throuples I send her. Anyway, I've had this mouse for a few weeks now, and uh, I was surprised at how good it felt right away. I, I thought there was a 50% chance I'd have to give up on this thing and go back to a regular mouse, like some plebe, but uh, I'm fully committed now. The uh, hand position is sort of like, like a handshake, or... It's like grabbing your Instagram girlfriend's hand as she leads you into pictures of exotic vistas. Instagram girlfriends are still allowed, right? In a, in a traditional marriage? It, it does feel good to hold. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice sensual experience. It really is more like holding a hand, so there's something about using this that feels more human. I have been thinking about this a little bit because, you know, they say there are certain things in life that are worth spending some money on, like worth upgrading. Um, you often hear this said about, you know, like, get a nice bed, 
get a nice mattress, get nice bed sheets. Um, because you spend so much time in bed, it's like it's worth the investment, you know? And don't worry, this isn't turning into like an ad for Brooklinen. With computers, you know, we spend so much time with them, but there's really just like two things we touch. It's the keyboard and then, you know, if you're on a laptop, there's a trackpad, but otherwise, it's, it's all about the mouse. So it's kind of weird that we don't think more about what that experience feels like. And, and this feels good. I promise I'm moving on to other items in just a sec, but I wanted to mention just a couple of downsides I've noticed about this thing. One is that sometimes when I'm holding some food in my right hand, but also want to move the mouse for whatever reason, I used to be able to just use my left hand, but now that is much harder due to the unique design of this thing. Of course, maybe I should slow down with all the eating while I'm using my mouse if I want this mouse to stay reasonably clean for more than a week or two. Another downside is that with embarrassing regularity when I'm typing on my keyboard and then move my hand over to the mouse, I accidentally bang into it because it's so tall and I sort of forget. I'm sure I'll stop doing this any day now, but it has been a little bit of a thing. Most of the time now, I remember to sort of lift my hand more when I move it over to the mouse, but that, that does require about 0.02% more effort, and that is an affront to me and my sensibilities. Anyway, I'm sure if you are a straight woman, you're gonna love how tall this thing is. Unless you prefer short kings. Anyway, yeah, long story short, I bought a new mouse, it's pretty cool. Then I wrote a dumb script about it and performed it in this video. And now there's no more script, and I'm done performing, so <laughs> let's move on to the next item I bought. I got these wooden rails and metal letters custom made in Turkey, or Turkey as it's called now, um, via Etsy. And then uh, I attached them to my air ventilation intake thing. So now I can spell out whatever I want on here and practice manual kerning. This was kind of a project to install and the rails are not perfect. These are, these are the screw holes and they're kind of all over the place. Um, but it didn't matter that much for me as my plan was to use 3M command strips to put these up anyway. I found that they make a narrow version of those strips and uh, they worked out pretty well. I'm really happy with how this came out. These air intakes are such ugly parts of modern apartments, so it was cool to come up with a way to transform this into an asset. I actually have a different cool idea for what we can do with the air intake in our living room, but that might be another future video, I guess. I also bought this phone charger thing, which I think looks like one of those mini cooktops people use when they go camping or when they decide living in a van is a cool and sensible idea. Or maybe it looks more like some sort of miniature DJ turntable situation. Either way, I'm pretty happy with it, primarily because it means I was able to get rid of some stray cables that were always chaotically slithering around on my glass desk. Speaking of sensible ideas, um, definitely buy a glass desk. It's really the only way that you can see all of your mess underneath your desk at all times. It's also a great way to see every place your fingers touched for the last seven months, um, or seven years, probably. Oh yeah, and to cover up some of that mess, I also bought this super wide desk mat thing from a company called Grovemade, and coasters to match. I feel like my studio is coming along. I got this shelf thing that I'm still filling up with stuff, and I even just ordered a couch or a chess long, actually, because you may not have realized this, but I'm a, I'm a fancy bitch. I've been thinking maybe I'll do a whole studio tour thing when that couch arrives, although it's going to be a while because it's, uh, it's coming all the way from Denmark. But let's see, what else have I been buying? Um, I feel like I basically didn't buy anything for the last like 10 years, and then after we moved into this new place, I have done nothing but just throw like $100 bills out the window and hoping that they land at an online retailer somewhere so that they'll send me things. Oh yeah, I, I bought this tray, but not because I'm concerned with what to put on it. Uh, in fact, I haven't really decided what I'll put on it. But uh, I got it so I can put paper towels and stuff under it, so my desk can look cleaner most of the time. 
I like having paper towels around because since, as previously mentioned, I'm often snacking on something or else I'm doing some sort of art thing where it's helpful to be able to wipe my hands. And then I also bought these clothes hangers from Muji. They have a nice sturdy but light design with a pleasant little knot up here. I threw out all my old hangers and just replaced them with these so that I just have one type of hanger. Another bonus of these is how they sound. Actually, hold on. Here I am in another closet and uh, I got 18 of these bad boys lined up. Get ready to be mesmerized. I've actually used clothes hangers as symbols before in, in songs that I've written and recorded. I should get back into that. While we're on the topic of music, let me show you another thing that I just bought. Um, this thing is called a tune core, and uh, it's made by a guy in Oakland who's doing this all by hand. It's basically a very lo-fi screen that displays the album art of whatever you're listening to on Spotify or your streaming music service of choice. And I learned about this through his marketing on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, some of the comments were people imploring the guy to make these with higher resolution screens. But I think that would be exactly the wrong thing for him to do. The, the low res nature of this is what I like. I think he's struck a nice balance where most albums are recognizable, but also feel sort of abstracted. I think if you made the screen even a little bit better, it would ironically look worse, because at that point it would be good enough to just look like a bad screen, if you know what I mean. Instead, the way it is now, it's like this is obviously super pixelated on purpose. Now, is this a pointless purchase? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's just a decorative thing to hopefully bring me a little bit of joy. So far it's working. Oh yeah, so another music related purchase. I, uh, I bought Guitar Rig 7, which is a piece of software that emulates amplifiers and guitar effects. So you can plug your guitar in and then get all sorts of weird and wonderful sounds. I used to have an earlier version of this, Guitar Rig 5 I think, maybe 4, I forget. I even had a hardware floor pedal thing, but that stopped working and I got rid of it. But the software is good and uh, it was selling for a hundred bucks instead of the regular price of 200 or at least so the marketing lingo went. And uh, now I get to demonstrate guitar rig by showing you a really weird thing I bought a long time ago. This is basically an African thumb harp, except it's been electrified and you can plug it into your guitar amp or wherever else and play it with any kind of effect you want. So uh, check this out. I'll show you a few of the presets from Guitar Rig. By the way, if you're familiar with this channel, you might be a tad bit confused about why I'm suddenly talking about making music when primarily I am a visual artist. But um, I do also make music, um, mostly as a hobby really, but um, I do also sometimes make music for my own animation work. And uh, I also upload my music to a music library, which is why every now and then a few people are extraordinarily lucky and they find themselves watching their favorite reality show and two people will be arguing about something stupid and very very faintly in the background you'll hear 8 to 12 seconds of a song that I composed. Multiple income streams, you know? We all of a sudden find ourselves in my bathroom, so I can show you another thing I bought, 
This is some cheap Chinese mini planter thing, but in it there is a preserved reindeer moss and aquarium rocks, both bought from suppliers I found on Etsy. I feel like this may be the ultimate greenery solution for a man who can't keep a plant alive, because this is already dead. It, it comes dead. No killing necessary. And uh, finally, just yesterday, we finally had this thing installed. We spent an absolutely ungodly amount of money on this. Watch. These are Lutron shades, um, which are these automated window shades that cost an arm and a leg and your firstborn. Um, but they come with this very tasteful kind of minimalist remote control and uh, you can also use an app to select, you know, various scenes, they call them. So you can have it like all the windows in your house, uh, you know, the shades can be in different positions and based on sunrise and sunset or certain schedules or like, yeah, times of day. You can have like, you know, I want this shade to be like three quarters up and this one to be fully down and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's pretty great until it breaks.